In this video, we're going to solve the oblique triangle ABC. If we're given the side length A, which is 54 centimeters, the side length B, which is 62 centimeters, and the angle measure A, which is given as 40 degrees, as illustrated in our diagram. I want to point out to you that the criteria we're given is the side-side angle uh, scenario, which is commonly referred to as the ambiguous case. We have to be cautious here because if, if we're not cautious, we might get the wrong solution in the end. There could be no solutions, one solutions or two solutions to the ambiguous case. So we'll investigate them using the law of sines. Why do we use the law of sines? Well, because we have angle A and we have side length A, we have an angle opposite side pair in AOS. So whenever you have an AOS, we can use the law of sines to help us find the missing information. For example, we have side length B, we can then use the law of sines to find the angle B in this situation. So the law of sines here tells us that sine B over little b is equal to sine A over little a. We want to solve for B, so times both sides by little b, that is, we're solving for angle B. So sine of B is equal to B over A times sine of A. And we're going to compute this value here. Uh, little b is 62, little a is 54, and sine of A, we're going to take sine of 40 degrees. We're going to use our calculator to help us out here. Uh, make sure your calculator is in degree mode and feel free to follow along with me. If you plug in 62 divided by 54 and times that by sine of 40 degrees, you'll end up with 0.74 as your ratio. Now, this is a critical step when you're working with the ambiguous case. You have to check, is this an acceptable sine ratio? The thing to remember here is that sine of B, like any sine function, it must be less than or equal to one, but it must be greater than or equal to negative one here. 0.74 falls inside that range. So that means there will be a solution to this triangle. And so we proceed forward to find it. Uh, now to find it, of course, uh, we're going to compute B here uh, using, of course, sine inverse on our calculator. B will equal sine inverse of, well, 62 over 54. That fraction does reduce to be 31 over 27, um, if anyone cares about that right now. Sine of 40 degrees. This is the exact value of our function, but an approximate value will be very appropriate here. Uh, when we take sine inverse of 0.74, uh, we end up with 48 degrees right here. But when you're working with this ambiguous case, like I said earlier, you could have one solution, you could have two solutions. We have to really consider both situations. So we have 48 degrees, uh, that's one possibility. And that one will work. We'll, do, we'll finish that one up in just a second here. But the thing is, when it comes to the sine function, sine can't tell the difference between an angle and its supplement. That is to say, uh, sine can't tell the difference between an acute angle or an obtuse angle. Because in the first quadrant or in the second quadrant, sine gives you in both cases, a positive ratio. So we have to consider the possibility that B is an obtuse angle. That is, we have to compute 180 degrees, take away 48 degrees that we just found right here, which of course, if we have 180 degrees and we take away 40 degrees, 48 degrees, that would give you 132 degrees. We have to consider both of these possibilities. So let's consider the first possibility where B is equal to 48 degrees. Uh, since we know A is 40 degrees and we now know that B is 48, this tells us that angle C will equal 180 degrees, take away 40, that's going to be A, and take away B, which is 48, and that will then tell us that C is equal to 92 degrees, like so. Uh, so that then proceeding from here, we can then use the law of sines to find little c, because little c over sine of capital C, this will equal little a over sine of capital A. I would always recommend you use the original AOS of A to solve this to avoid any rounding concerns. Uh, so this tells us that little c is equal to A over sine of C over sine of A. Let's compute these values here. Uh, little c equals little a, which is 54, uh, times sine of C, which was 92 degrees. And we divide that by sine of 40 degrees, for which then we use our calculator here, and we get that C equals, again, make sure we're in degree measure for this. We're gonna compute 45 times, excuse me, 54 times sine of 92 divided by sine of 40 degrees, and you'll get approximately uh, 84 centimeters right here. So let's put in the information we found, okay? So if B is an acute angle, we'll get that it is 48 degrees. Let me try that again so it's a little bit more legible. 48 degrees. Um, that would then imply that C is 92 degrees, and then the remaining side would be 84 centimeters 
like so. That would then be, that's one possible triangle here. And so I'm actually gonna sketch it down below here so we can see this thing compared to what the other solution is gonna look like here. So if we have our triangle, something like this, again, labeling everything, we have angle A, angle B, angle C. So all the information we found out here, I'm gonna put in green the original information. So we were given 40 degrees for that, 54 centimeters for this side, and then 62 centimeters for this side. And then we discovered that B was 48 degrees, C was 92 degrees, and that uh, little c was 84 centimeters like so. That's if B is an acute angle, but what if B is an obtuse angle? We have to consider that case. If we just ignore it, there could be a second triangle we have to consider. Well, if B, is 132 degrees, A is still 40 degrees, there's no variability there. What would C then be? Well, let's compute C. C equals 180 degrees, take away A, take away B, right? Um, which case, when we do that calculation, you take 40 degrees away from C, excuse me, take 40 degrees away from 180, you'll get, of course, 140, take away 132, that leaves C being eight degrees, which is a positive angle measure. And this is the critical thing here. If your angle measure for C turns out to be negative, that would mean that this obtuse case is impossible and the one triangle we found already is the only solution. But in this situation, C ended up with a positive angle measure that actually tells us that there is a legitimate second solution. This is an example of the ambiguous case that has two distinct solutions. Once we have angle C as eight degrees, we can then use the law of sines just like we did over here uh, to, I'm actually gonna separate it there. We're gonna use the law of sines again to find little c. So we're gonna take sine here now of eight degrees. This will equal 54 over sine of 40 degrees. We use the exact same values for a right here. Uh, little c then becomes 54 over sine of eight degrees over sine of 40 degrees. Your calculator is gonna be your best friend right here. Again, make sure you're in degree mode for this calculation. 54 times sine of eight degrees divided by sine of 40 degrees. This will end up with 12 centimeters as your final answer. And so then we get our second possibility, which I wanna draw it side by side with this one right here. Uh, well, I'll, I'll draw a little bit, a uh, little bit. Oh, let's put it over here so it's a little bit easier to see. So we end up with something like this, all right? Which in this situation, we have angles A, B, and C. You'll notice I drew, drew my diagram a little bit differently here because this is the situation where B is obtuse. So the initial information, A is still 40 degrees. This side right here is still 54 centimeters. This side over here is still 62 centimeters. But what we discovered in this situation is that A or B, excuse me, turned out to be 132 degrees. C then turned out to be eight degrees, it was teeny tiny. And then the other side down below turned out to be 12 centimeters like so. And so given the initial information, side side angle of 54, 62 centimeters and 40 degrees, it turns out there are two possible triangles that solve this ambiguous case. And this is why the case is called ambiguous. Just giving us information of side side angle, we don't know if there's zero solutions, one solutions or two solutions. And in this video, we see an example where the ambiguous case ended up with two distinct oblique triangle solutions.